Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to show you the Mongolian fairy shrimp, scientifically known as Branchiopodopsis affinis. So, researching the habitat and range for these guys was quite challenging due to limited information on the internet. However, I did find that these fairy shrimp are typically found in high altitude environments, mostly in pools that form in rock formations. They belong to the genus Branchiopodopsis, which is also known as the peacock-eyed fairy shrimps, which can be found in parts of Africa and Asia. Now, let's talk about raising these guys in captivity. First of all, you might be wondering how I even acquired fairy shrimps like these. And to that, I actually found them on eBay. For the tank setup, like I do with most of my fairy shrimps, I use a substrate mixture of sand, compost, and calcium carbonate. And this has pretty much worked for all my species. These fairy shrimp do take some time to hatch, usually between 24 to 72 hours. Um, for what I researched online, based on their habitat, it looks like their eggs are adapted to areas of prolonged drought, so their eggs tend to remain dormant until water is present for an extended period of time. Once they hatch, they grow pretty rapidly, reaching sexual maturity within a week and continuing to grow until they reach full size, which is just about under an inch. These fairy shrimp tend to be speedy swimmers, but occasionally some will swim in a stationary pattern. Uh, females tend to do this more than males, and males are more faster and more erratic in swimming. The male fairy shrimps of this species are quite persistent in pursuing females, and sometimes they do cause stress to the females. So in my tanks, I usually have a higher ratio of females to males with this species. The mating process for the species is very short, as males will find a female, attach themselves to the female, and only mate for a few seconds. Now onto some unique features of this fairy shrimp. Males have a vibrant orange fork tail that curves downward, and females display bright coloration on their oversac or brood patch. The features that I mentioned are not exclusive to the species, rather they're common features found within the genus. I was looking for more defining features, however, there's not a lot of accessible literature online. Well, this is all the information that I have for the species. Um, you guys can watch the remaining clips that I have on here, but if you really like this content, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel.